Hey guys, Mike Inbell556 here, and I'm really excited about today's topic. I'm going to explore the possibility of building a semi-automatic rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. There are three criteria for this build. First, I want to end up with a rifle that has match grade accuracy. So that means we're going to have to use a top tier match grade barrel and trigger. The second criteria is to make this rifle lightweight. I want this to be a rifle that you can lug through the woods and hunt with. And our goal is to try to keep the weight around 8 pounds. The third criteria is to try to keep the cost down. My target budget is less than $2,000. To try to keep the weight down, I want to come up with ways of reducing weight without spending money on expensive carbon fiber or titanium parts. So why 6.5 Creedmoor? This is a round that was developed in 2007 primarily as a target shooting round. The brass is based on the 300 Savage and the projectile is based on the 264 Winchester. The overall case length of this round is similar to the 308. So it can be used in bolt guns that are short action and in semi-automatic platforms that are based on the AR-10. The 264 projectile offers a very high ballistic coefficient and sectional density, and that means that this projectile flies well through the air. This round has proven to be very accurate and very potent with a modest recoil. So for the purposes of our build, which is a semi-automatic 6.5 Creedmoor, we want to look at the AR-10 platform. To establish a baseline that we can compare our project to, I want to review what's available in the marketplace in 6.5 Creedmoor semi-automatic rifles. Please understand that I'm not judging, reviewing, or otherwise evaluating any of these other rifles that I'm going to talk about. All I want to do is review the published specifications of what's available in the marketplace for semi-automatic 6.5 Creedmoors. So we can see how our build compares to what's available if you just go out and buy a product. As a general rule, the less expensive guns are heavier, and the more expensive guns with higher quality barrels and triggers are lighter, but obviously more costly. So the idea is to see what we can do on our own. And where we fit in as far as the price versus weight versus accuracy ratio. So briefly, let me just review some of the rifles that are available on the marketplace today. I'll start with the least expensive and move up to the most expensive. Lifree Armory has a rifle that starts at just under $1,300 with a 22-inch stainless steel barrel and a mil-spec trigger, but it weighs just over 11 pounds. Smith & Wesson has their MP10 that's offered in 6.5 Creedmoor, that comes with a 20 inch barrel that has 5R rifling and it's priced at about $2,000. It does come with a two stage trigger, but it weighs just over 9 pounds. Seekins offers an SP10 model with a suggested retail price of about $2,600. It comes with a 22 inch stainless steel match barrel. It has an ambi lower, but it weighs 10 and a half pounds. PWS has their long stroke piston system, the MK220. Its price range is between $2,400 and $2,700. It comes with a 20 inch stainless steel barrel, but it still weighs 9.5 pounds. Christensen Arms offers their 6.5 Creedmoor with a 22 inch carbon fiber sleeved barrel. It also has a carbon fiber handguard. It comes with a single stage match trigger a titanium muzzle brake, and is the lowest weight at 7 pounds and 3 ounces, but comes with a price tag well over $3,000. And the most expensive that I saw was Nemo Arms, and they have models that range from $3,800 up to close to $5,000, with a 20-inch barrel, a two-position gas block, and ambi lower, and their product weighs about 8.2 pounds. So let's see if we can come up with something that is lightweight, accurate, and relatively inexpensive. And we'll see how our build compares to what's available in the marketplace. We have to start with the AR-10 platform, but the problem is the AR-10 platform is inherently heavy. And because of this, I'm looking at the new Generation 2 AR-10 platforms. 
The DPMS Gen 2 small frame 308 platform starts with a bolt carrier group that is 8 ounces lighter than the standard AR10 bolt carrier. And the receivers themselves are also lighter and smaller. The problem is this is a relatively new platform and no one is selling stripped receivers for the generation 2 small frame 308s. So we're going to have to start with a donor rifle. So I searched the internet for the very best price for a generation 2 that I could use as a host rifle to convert from 308 to 6.5 Creedmoor. And this is what I've come up with for this build. Our host rifle is going to be this DPMS Gen 2 Mo model. Comes with the Magpul furniture. It has a very lightweight barrel. Mo handguard. And most importantly, it is a small frame. This rifle with the particular barrel it has weighs about seven and a quarter pounds. So this project build basically is going to entail rebarreling this rifle. And what we'll be doing is changing everything from the front of the upper receiver forward and we'll be putting in our Geisley trigger. So to review the components that I picked out for this build, to achieve accuracy there are two key components, the barrel and the trigger. And what I've chosen for this build is this very nice 22 inch fluted stainless steel barrel. It's a match grade barrel from a near arms. And critically, this is one of the very few barrels that comes with the generation two barrel extension. So it'll work with the smaller framed 308 platforms. This barrel has its own proprietary gas length system that's a little bit longer than the standard rifle gas system. So it comes with its own gas tube. The trigger that I'm going to use for this build is the very excellent Geisley Super Dynamic 3 gun single stage trigger. With these two products, we definitely should be able to offer a very high degree of accuracy with this build. The flutes will help us keep the weight down. We have a Troy 8.75 inch gas block. I picked just a stainless steel A2 flash hider and I did bead blast this just so it would match the barrel a little bit better. For our hand guard, we'll be going with the Midwest Industries. This is their 15 inch hand guard. Once again, this gas system is longer than a rifle length. So if we had used a 12 inch hand guard, we would have gas tube exposed. This is a very nice hand guard. It's free float. We use the key mod as opposed to the M lock. The key mod was actually a few dollars more expensive, but it was about an ounce lighter. And since we're concerned with weight, we went with the key mod design. This comes with its own proprietary barrel nut. Midwest Industries has designed this to work with the generation two small frame 308 rifles. So to review the cost of this build, our host platform, I searched and searched and found someone selling these for $900. So the total cost was $925 to get this rifle shipped. This very nice Creedmoor barrel from Rainier Arms is a $500 barrel. The Geisley trigger is $250. Our lightweight free float handguard from Midwest Industry is $230. The gas block from Troy is $35. We paid $20 for this stainless steel flash hider. So what we're looking at total with the components for this build, we did get this under $2,000. When we're done, we will have a brand new front end off of this 308 host rifle. And if you deduct the value of that, then, you know, that's going to be subjective. And that brings the price down if you want to go ahead and sell those spare parts and recoup some of the money.
So realistically, at the end of the day, we're only going to have a little more than $1,600 invested in this project. Now, this is a rebarreling project and a trigger swap project. And I know a lot of my viewers have probably changed out triggers in AR-15s before, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now, the rebarreling is a little bit more in depth. I'm sure a lot of my viewers have rebarreled their own AR-15s. This is a Generation 2 platform. So the cross-sectional area of these Generation 2 receivers is the same as the AR-15. The difference is in the length of the receiver overall with the magwell and the upper receiver. So the lengths are different, but if you look at the cross sections, they're the same. So I'm not buying any special tools uh, to, to do the barrel swap. I have a reaction rod that I'm going to be able to use. This does fit. Because of the shape of the keys, there is a little bit of play. So I think initially, rather than use the reaction rod, although I do think this probably will work, I'm going to use my upper receiver block. I have my standard AR-15 upper receiver block, and because the cross section of the small frame receiver for the 308 is the same dimension as the AR-15, this will fit snugly. It will just be a little bit longer, so I'll be able to use one cross pin, and I'll try to secure the upper receiver when we do the barrel change. Other tools that I'll have available are just my standard barrel nut wrenches and muzzle device wrenches. I've got a few different ones. We'll use punches and to do the trigger change. I have this little block that I'll use just to hold the receiver a little bit. I have my trusty Brownell screwdriver set. So, so basic tools for changing a barrel in an AR-15 are the only tools that I'm going to use with this build. So the first step in this caliber conversion is to go ahead and remove the Magpul handguard and then remove the gas tube. That will give me access to the barrel nut so that we can remove the 308 barrel. All right, now I need to go ahead and try to mount this upper receiver in my upper receiver block. And let's see how stubborn the barrel nut is. See if we can get this barrel off without too much difficulty. All right, the internal dimensions should be the same. The length is gonna be off. So if we try to move this, it's very snug. The support internally is good. It's just that the receiver is going to be a little bit too long. So we'll put our cross pin in the front and then we'll clamp the back of the receiver to try to stabilize it. Now we have this front attached and I'm gonna go ahead I think and take off this mag pull and then we'll clamp the back. I've used a bar clamp to stabilize the back of the receiver where the cross pin would normally be and once again because the cross sectional dimensions are similar to a standard AR-15. I have my Magpul armor's wrench and if you check the teeth of the barrel nut line up perfectly with the armor's wrench. So once again you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of special tools if you already have the equipment to change a barrel on an AR-15. Okay, that came off very easily. That loosened right up. So removing this barrel is a piece of cake. So after the build, these are the leftover brand new takeoff parts we have. A complete 308 Generation 2 barrel assembly. We have the fire control group, a backup iron sight, the Magpul handguard, and a carbine gas tube. All unused takeoffs that we could sell on the secondary market and deduct that from the cost of this build. Okay, we'll put a little Aeroshell 33 grease. We're gonna put some grease on the threads. Okay, now we have our new barrel. We'll fit it in the upper receiver.
We have a proprietary barrel nut with our very nice lightweight P-Mod free float handguard. I pull armor's wrench. That went on very smoothly. Now let's put on our gas block and gas tube and then we'll install the hand guards and the muzzle device. Now for the installation of the gas block and gas tube and the hand guards, I went back to the Geisley reaction rod. And that's just a matter of convenience because with the reaction rod I can rotate this as I'm working on it to install the gas block and hand guards. Now what I had to do is just extend the reaction rod past the flats just about three quarters of an inch because once again the cross-sectional measurements are the same as an Air 15 but the receiver is longer. So we want it to be able to stand out from our clamp a little bit. So this will hold it on and we'll put our gas block on and then put the hand guards on. The barrel does come with a dimple for the gas block. So once again, I can just turn this over. We have the dimple here for our set screw. Make sure the screws are out so we won't scratch our beautiful barrel as we install this. Alright, so this just makes it very easy. We can rotate around and change the angles as we're installing the handguard and gas block. That looks good there. And we'll come back to our dimple. Now the dimple is on the proximal screw. So I'll take this out, kind of eyeball it, make sure I get it close. there and then I'll just barely touch that we'll put the proximal screw in and snug it once it starts touching then I'll back this out and that will let that center itself so now we're going to snug that proximal screw Take the distal screw out, put a little rock set on it. That looks good. Now we've got that secure, we'll take the proximal dimple screw out, put a little rock set on that. Snug those down. Okay. Wipe off our extra rock set. 
and that should be good to go after 24 hours. Now, let's switch this around and let's look at our hand guard now. That looks very nice. 10.3 ounces, not bad for a 15 inch hand guard. Okay, that looks good. We're going to just tighten up the screws. Okay. There's our hand guard and our barrel. Let's put the muzzle device on. Have a stainless steel crush washer. Now we can put the internals back in and let's uh, go ahead and change out our trigger in the lower. Let's take the trigger out that comes with this DPMS and install our Geisley trigger now. We'll take the hammer out first. This feels like a completely different rifle now. It's a little on the front heavy side. This gun is all barrel and trigger. The handguard is very comfortable. Just feels like a different beast all together. Budget wise, we've kept this build well under $2,000. If you consider the new parts that we've taken off, Really, we're looking at maybe $1,600 or $1,700 with a Geisley $250 trigger and a $500 barrel. So the budget aspect of our build, I think, has been a success. Now, let's see about the weight. This gun, this gun from the factory weighed seven and a quarter pounds. Eight pounds, 1.7, 1.6, 1.7. 1 8 pounds, 1.7 ounces. So our target was around an 8 pound rifle. This weighs about 3 quarters of a pound heavier than it did from the factory. So I think once again, that was a successful goal met. The third criteria for this build was accuracy. So now let's go ahead and, and scope this rifle out, get it out to Bullet Creek, and let's make sure it functions well and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this build. Obviously a project like this isn't for everyone, but if you're comfortable rebarreling your AR-15 and you have the proper tools to do that, then I think this is easily obtainable. The total build time was less than an hour. So we've gone from this to this. Match grade barrel, match grade trigger, free float, lightweight handguard with key mods. So far I'm very pleased. So let's mount a scope now on this rifle. We'll get it out to Bullet Creek. We'll confirm that it functions well and we'll see what kind of accuracy we can get. Mm. 